Hey grade 12, so I'm just making a video lesson here just going over trigonometric ratios using radians. Uh, so just keep in mind that in this video, just to save a bit of time, and as I mentioned before, I've had issues whenever the videos are too long, um, I'm just going to focus on the main examples. Um, so I'm, I'm going to let you actually read through most of the actual content itself, and then I'll just make sure that the examples make sense to you. Uh, so basically what we're doing right now is a little bit of re uh, review of grade 11. Uh, only difference now is that we're looking at trigonometric ratios using radians. So we're just adding in uh, an extra element to this. So obviously we know about the primary trig ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, and of course in grade 11 you learned about the trigonometric ratios in Cartesian planes. So that's using the cast rule and understanding that angles can go from 0 to 360 and above or below. Uh, but we mainly focus on angles between 0 and 360 degrees. And uh, now we're going to be focusing on angles that are in radians going and the main focus will be from 0 to 2 pi. So we're just basically extending our knowledge of trigonometric ratios using radians. So uh, first thing and I'll go through this really quickly hopefully everyone remembers this um, just how to find tri uh, trigonometric ratios. So the first thing is we draw out uh, the angle itself so we know that if we're given a point we can draw a terminal arm and we draw it just like this. So let's say that there's a point right there. We draw a terminal arm that, and the angle that we create goes from the positive X axis all the way up to the terminal arm. And once we have that angle drawn, we can actually find uh, three primary trig ratios. So sine, cosine, and tan. And I'm not gonna go over this too much because hopefully you remember that from grade uh, 10, Sokotoa. Um, and then we also know that once there's a different way that we can express uh, the trigonometric ratios, we can write uh, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on. Um, but we can also express it in terms of the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and the radius of the circle. So I think it makes a little bit more sense once I show you this picture here. If you notice um, this point that is given to us right here, x, y, we'll notice that if we use this angle as our reference angle, uh, our opposite side will be the y-coordinate, of the right triangle that we create there. Our adjacent side will be the X coordinate. And of course, our radius is simply just the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we realize that instead of actually writing opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on, we can actually replace this opposite side right here with the Y. We can replace the hypotenuse with the R, and that's how we get sine of theta is equal to Y over R. We follow the same logic here. We can replace the adjacent side with the x, and we replace the hypotenuse with the r. So that's how we get cosine of theta as x over r. And finally, tan theta, we notice that is that is going to be the opposite side, which is y, over the adjacent side, which is x. Um, so my suggestion, really make sure you understand how we find these primary trig ratios. We can do an example here. And this first, ex uh, this first example that we look at is actually not that different from what you did in grade 11. There's only one difference is that we're going to be looking at finding an angle in both degrees and radians. That's the only thing that's new. So we're given that this point negative two and three is up here. And hopefully this picture kind of helps you out a little bit. Uh, you'll notice first that obviously our Y coordinate is three. So that's going to be our opposite side. And we and, and even though this is the angle that we're looking for, this is our principal angle right here the angle that we use to create this right triangle is actually this one that's down here and this one is hopefully you remember this from grade 11 is called a related acute angle so the related acute angle is the angle that is created with the x-axis right so in this case we notice that this is our related acute angle and we can actually label our right triangle based on this angle right here i'm, I'm actually going to label it as b for beta um, and we notice right away that our opposite side is going to be 3. Our adjacent side is going to be 2. Um, but we actually have to also include the negative. I'll explain that in a little bit. And of course, our radius is the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. So the first thing is determine the primary uh, trig ratio. So before we even find out what sine, cosine, and tan ratios are, we need to know what x, y, and r are. So we already know, and I'll go to the next slide here, we already know that uh, the 3 is the y coordinate, the 2 is the x coordinate, but we need to be careful with this. Uh, we notice that it's actually not just 2, it's actually negative 2, right? Uh, so because it is a negative 2, we need to make sure that we include that sign in there. So 
we write that three, the y is 3, the x is negative 2, and then the radius is still unknown. But how can we find the radius? Well, hopefully you remember this from grade 9, grade 10, grade 11. I'm sure you did it all throughout, but just in different ways. We notice it's a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem, or you can actually use the equation of a circle. And the equation of a circle, if you remember from grade 10, tells us that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this means that we can simply sub in uh, the x coordinates and the y coordinates into this equation over here and just solve backwards, solve for the radius. And I'm not going to do all the math here because this is actually hopefully a little bit easier for you. All I have to do is sub in the, the points x and y into this equation and we solve for r. Uh, and then that gives us r squared is equal to 13, which means that r is equal to the square root of 13. So that means our radius is the square root of 13. So now we piece it all together. So we have an x, and I think I'm just going to write it up here so it's very clear. x is negative 2, y is 3, and of course our final one, the radius is the square root of 13. So that means that we can easily find our primary trig ratios just by subbing in x, y, and r into them. So we have sine is equal to y over r, which in this case is 3 over square root of 13. Uh, cosine theta is x over r, which is negative 2 over square root of 13. Uh, and then finally, we have tan theta, which is y over x, which is just going to be 3 over negative 2. And that gives us this negative 3 over 2. So for the second part of the question, they're asking us to find the angle. To find the angle, uh, you need to pick one of the three ratios that we used here to help us solve for it. My suggestion is to use tan theta because we were actually given y and x originally in the question. Um, so just in case you made a mistake when calculating the radius, at least um, this part will be correct because you were already given the x and y coordinate. Now keep in mind that you'll notice I basically ignored that negative and there's a reason for this. Remember to find the related acute angle, we ignore the negative sign and we just always make it positive because we're just trying to figure out what that one acute angle is, right? And then once you know what the related acute angle is, you can then use that to help you find all the other, um, uh, the principal angle or any other angles that we need to find there. So we're just going to ignore the negative sign. Um, and again, this is just one way to do it. You could keep the negative sign, but just letting you know, if you do this, you'll end up getting an angle that is negative, And then you would have to add a, find a coterminal angle. I feel like that's a lot more work. My suggestion is essentially when you're finding the related acute angle, you ignore that negative sign. And then that's going to help you just find the related acute angle. And just keep in mind, this is not your final answer. This is just going to help you find the angle. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Um, and again, this is a bit of review from grade 11. So what we're going to do next is we will find the related acute angle by just taking the tan inverse of 3 over 2. And remember, it's positive in this case. And when you put this in your calculator, you end up getting 56.3. So you might want to just double check that that's correct. I always make mistakes, so just uh, catch me if you notice it, catch any errors if you find them there. Um, so I know that my related acute angle is 56.3. Now keep in mind, like I said before, this isn't my final answer. So even if you're struggling with understanding trig ratios, I hope that most of you can uh, start to visualize what our answer is looking like. So we know that our point is up here at negative 2 and 3. And we are told that we are trying to find this angle right here. All we know so far is that this is our related acute angle. And we're going to just label this as RAA. So we only know that this is 56.3, but we want to figure out what this whole entire angle is. So what you might notice is that this whole angle going from one end to the other is 180 degrees. Uh, that's half the circle. So if we want to figure out what this principal angle is right here, all we need to do is take away 56.3 from 180. I'm just subtracting off this little angle right here. And when we do this, we get 180 minus 56.3, which is 123.7. Um, and if we want to find the angle in radians, what we would need to do is follow the very similar steps, except that you would be uh, sh changing the mode on your calculator to radians. And if you have no idea what uh, where this is on your calculator, it should be near the bottom, especially if you're using a, a calculator on your laptop or your phone. Uh, you will normally find it near the bottom. If you're using one of those uh, older calculators, you might have to uh, look for the buttons at the very top. Uh, so again, play around with this. Make sure that you know where the settings are for your calculator. 
you need to switch this into radians and what you're going to do is follow the exact same steps that we did except that it's in radians so to find out what the angle what the related acute angle is is we find tan inverse of 3 over 2 just like we did before that gives us 0 0.9828 and keep in mind that anytime i just write this as my answer without any units and we're talking about angles it's assumed that we're talking about radians right uh, so whenever you see just a number or a number with a pi symbol there um, and we're talking about angles we know it's in radians so then what we're going to do in this case to find the principal angle just like we did before we're going to be subtracting it from a hundred so instead of 180 degrees it's going to be its equivalent in radian which is pi so then we have pi minus 0 0.9828 which gives us 2.1588 and of course uh, just a little warning here uh, especially when you're uh, working with radians do not round your answer um, too much until the end uh, because it does make a difference so really try to keep as many digits as you can until the very last step um, and again of course the more you round you know that your answer is not going to be as accurate reciprocal trig ratios so we learned about this last year in grade 11 you know that we have our primary trig ratios and then of course we have our reciprocal trig ratios which basically means that we are finding the reciprocal of the primary trig ratios. So as an example, we know that cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine, which means that instead of writing y over r, we'll just simply write the ratio as r over y. We just switch um, the numerator and denominator in the ratio. Uh, for secant, we know that the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that means that we switch the ratio of x over r to r over x. And of course, the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which means that we flip the x, the ratio x, y over x to become x over y. So if you want to solve a ratio or an angle and you're given reciprocal trig ratios, the really difficult thing here is that there actually is no button for that. So what you need to do is be a little bit more clever. You're actually going to have to work uh, with the primary trig ratios first to help you figure out what the answer is. So to find the reciprocal of a trig ratio for an angle, you first have to calculate the primary trig ratio, and you do that just like you did before using your calculator. And then the only difference is we are now, once you find that final answer, you're gonna take the reciprocal of that. Um, and remember, reciprocal is either you raise it to the power of negative one, and some of you will have a button for that, or you actually might have a reciprocal button on your calculator. Sometimes it looks like this, one over x. And again, this is just showing you where it is on the calculator. And of course, the, uh, if you are given, if you want to find the angle, if you're given the trig ratio, all you need to do in this case is find the reciprocal of the ratio first. So that means you flip the, uh, the ratios, the numerator, and denominator, and the ratio. And then you just find the inverse primary trig ratio to determine it. And again, this doesn't really make a lot of sense until you see an example. So let's do a couple examples here. So in our first one here, we are given, uh, we're asked to find the cosecant of 15 degrees to four decimal places. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the sine of 15 degrees. And the reason I do this is because I know that sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So when, when I evaluate what sine of 15 degrees is, and I need a calculator for this part, I end up getting 0 0.2588 rounded. I would suggest just keep it in your calculator. Don't, do not delete it. If you know how to use the memory button, use that. Don't actually delete this because you're going to need this number to not be rounded so much so that you get a more accurate answer, okay? So what we're going to do next is we will simply just find the reciprocal of this answer. So we know that cosecant of 15 degrees will just be 1 over sine 15. We know that uh, sine 15 is rounded, 0 0.2588, and remember we rounded that off. So then all we need to do is take this value right here, and on your calculator, you can actually raise it to the power of negative one, or your other option is to save that number and divide one by that answer. So we're gonna divide one by 0 0.2588. And when you put this in a calculator, and again, uh, try not to round until the last step, you should get approximately 3.8637 and that's rounded to four decimal places. Let's do another example. If we want to find the cotangent of 13 pi over 15, to evaluate this, we know that we're going to be focusing on the reciprocal of cotangent, and the reciprocal of cotangent is simply tan. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the tangent of 13 pi over five. Uh, so we have the tan, we know that the tan, and again, if you put this in a calculator, 
you take 13 multiply by pi and then divide by 5 and then you take the tan of that you should get negative uh, 3.0777 uh, now keep in mind one small thing if you're doing this and you're wondering how come I didn't get this answer um, I hope everyone knows this but this needs to be in radians so how do I know that this is in radians not degrees well simply by the way that the angle is given to me because I'm given the angle and there's a pi in there I know that we're talking about radians so right off the bat I need to make sure that I change the setting on my calculator so what is hard about this unit and this is where people really get stuck um, they don't switch their the settings on their calculators uh, when they need to so just make sure when you're reading a question ask yourself are we talking about radians or degrees if we're talking about radians and we are in this case because there's a pi symbol there then we know we need to switch the setting on the calculator to radians and if you take uh, in, if you have it in radians and the radian setting you take the tan of 13 times pi divided by 5 you should get negative 3.0777 and once we do this all we need to do now to find the cotangent of 13 pi over 5 is just uh, find the reciprocal of this answer right here negative 3.0777 um, and this gives us negative 0. negative 0. 0.3249. And we have another somewhat easy example. So if we're evaluating the secant of 5.95, um, so once again, before doing anything else, I hope everyone is clear on this, we need to use the radian setting. And the reason for that is because there is no degrees given to us. So if you don't see that little degree symbol there, that means that we're talking about radians, right? So whenever you don't see units, we're talking about radians here. So what we're going to do is find the reciprocal of secant, which is the which is cosine. So we're going to find the cosine of 5.95 first. And when you put this in your calculator, hopefully everyone gets the same answer, uh, 0 0.945. And of course, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the reciprocal of that. Uh, so the reciprocal of 0 0.945 is just 1 divided by 0 0.945. And again, it's rounded. But keep in mind that when I actually did this question, I didn't actually round any of my answers. Um, I, I just kept them in my calculator. I stored it in my memory. So really try to do that as much as you can. Uh, and then, of course, the final answer should, the final answer should be 1.0582. So once again, a little warning here. Um, if you are asked to find the ratio for an angle in degrees and you actually see the degree symbol, you need to use degrees. But if you're asked to find the ratio and the angle is given to you in either radians which means it's given to you as just a, a number without any units or it has pi in there then you know you're going to be using the radian setting okay so let's do uh, another example here what if you want to find the angle if you're given the ratio so if we're finding the angle given the ratio we're going to work backwards here so we're asked to find the angle theta for secant is equal to three so the first thing we do is we notice that the secant theta is just the reciprocal of of cosine so because it's the reciprocal of cosine it's going to be r over x because secant theta is equal to r over x and we're given and we're told that the secant theta is equal to 3 then we can actually write 3 as a fraction as 3 over 1 so what we know now is that the radius is 3 and the x coordinate will be 1 so if you're given that the x is 1 and the radius is 3 then we can easily find the cosine and that will be a lot easier for us to work with because we actually know how to calculate the cos inverse um, in our calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to write cos theta is equal to x over r, which is equal to 1 over 3. So we essentially just find the reciprocal of the ratio that's given to us. And then we're going to calculate the uh, inverse trig primary trig ratio to find the angle there. So to find the angle theta, we take cos inverse of 1 over 3 and of course we're using degrees because it was given to us and we're told to find this in degrees if we were to find this in radians uh, we would need to make sure that our setting is on radians in this case I decided just to stick with degrees for now uh, but just so you know if you were doing this question with radians you would follow the same format except that you have to make sure your, your setting is in radians that's the only difference um, so we find the cos inverse of 1 over 3 which gives us 70.5 degrees and this keep in mind is only one of the angles that we have here now I just before we move on to anything else I want to make sure everyone understands why this is one of the possible a answers well we know that the ratio itself is positive so going back to grade 11 we have something called the cast rule 
this casserole tells us where our possible angles are. So in this case, because we're given a ratio and not the angle, we actually have two possibilities in this case. One of our possible answers we know is going to be in this quadrant because it is a positive ratio and we know that in this quadrant all the ratios are going to be positive sine cosine sorry sine cosine and tan so we know for a fact that um, since our cosine ratio is positive there's going to be one angle over here in this in this quadrant and then of course we know that there's going to be another angle in this quadrant right here the fourth quadrant which uh, because we are told that in this quadrant cosine is positive so we know that there's going to be two angles and they're going to be right here. So one of them is here and our second angle is right here. So it is this one right here and we'll label this as theta 2. Similar to what we did before, if we want to find out what this angle is, this theta 2, which is the second angle, we essentially need to first figure out what the related acute angle is. Uh, but we got kind of lucky in this case uh, because our related acute angle also happens to be the first angle that we found. It's actually going to be 70.5. So in this case, to find out what theta 2 is, all we need to do is take 360 degrees and simply subtract off the related acute angle. And we already know that the related acute angle is equal to theta 1. So we're just going to be taking 360 minus this angle right here, which we found was 70.5. So we can see more clearly now that to find our second angle, all we need to do is take 360 degrees, which is this angle right here, and simply subtract off the related acute angle, which is 70.5. So let's do the math here. We take 360 minus 70.5, that gives us 289.5 degrees. And this means that our two angles are 70.5 and 289.5 degrees. So our final topic here is about special triangles uh, using radians. So we already know about the special angles in degrees, and I'll go over this very, very briefly. So we know we have a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle uh, whose sides are 1, 1, and square root of 2. And then we have another special triangle that is 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees whose sides are 1, square root of 3, and 2. And the two triangles look like this. Uh, and I hope everyone remembers this from grade 11. I hope you have it stored in your memory because you'll be using this a lot. So the only difference between this and what we're going to do in grade 12 is that we simply replace the degree values from previous special triangles with radian, uh, with radian values. So 45 degrees will now become pi over 4. Uh, we know that 30 degrees becomes pi over 6. And 60 degrees now becomes pi over 3. And of course, 90 degrees for both triangles is pi over 2. So really, the only difference is that we have switched the angle values themselves from degrees to radians. Let's look at an example here. So we are asked to find the six primary trig ratios for 4 pi over 3. Uh, so first thing we notice is that uh, it's the 4 pi over 3 is not one of the angles in the special triangle. But I hope that we realize that if we draw this in the Cartesian plane, we can actually create a special right triangle uh, with just the related acute angle. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out where 4 pi over 3 is. And if you're struggling with this, if you're still having a hard time with radians, uh, do not worry about this. You can always do this. This is always a good option here, is to switch this into degrees if that helps you uh, understand it a little bit better. So if you want to switch uh, radians into degrees, don't forget that you need to multiply by 180 over pi. Uh, so you can do all this work, you can reduce it, you know, that the pi's cancel out. And when you end up doing the work here, you end up finding that the answer is 240 degrees. So we know that 240 degrees or 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant. So I drew a diagram here just to help illustrate this. So in brown, we can see that this is the principal angle. Uh, we know that the related acute angle is simply pi over 3. It's just the difference between 4 pi over 3 and pi uh, so that's the related acute angle and what we did is we created a right triangle for this related acute angle so what we're going to do next is simply label this right triangle in green here so the question becomes how do we label the sides in this green triangle well let's do a little bit of work here um, it might actually help if we just draw a right triangle here on the side and we just label this angle right here pi over three so going back to basics, uh, we recognize that pi over 3 is one of the special 
uh, angles and the special triangles. And we know that its opposite side right here will be square root of 3. Now, the only thing you have to watch out for is that because it is actually below the x-axis, that means that this y-coordinate, which is the opposite side, will actually be negative. And we know that the adjacent side to pi over 3 is simply going to be the opposite of this angle right here, which is the smallest one now. So we know that this will be 1. And because it is to the left of the y-axis, then we know it's going to be negative. So we have a negative adjacent side and a negative opposite side. And all we need to do now is to try to figure out, okay, well, what's the radius right here? Well, we hopefully recognize this from the special triangle. We know that we have uh, negative square root of 3, negative 1, and of course our hypotenuse in this case will be 2. So now we have a better idea of what the right triangle associated with the related acute angle looks like. Uh, so we have an opposite side of negative square root of 3, we have an adjacent side of negative 1, and we have a hypotenuse of 2. So putting all this together, uh, we can actually find the six trigonometric ratios. We know that sine of the angle will simply be y over r, and in this case it would be negative square root of 3 over the radius, which is 2, and that gives us negative square root of 3 over 2. Uh, cosine will be uh, x over r, which is negative 1 over 2, and that just becomes negative 1 over 2, pretty easy. And of course, the tangent of this uh, pr principal angle will be y over x, which is negative square root of 3 over square over uh, negative 1, which becomes positive square root of 3. And of course, the reciprocal trig ratios are easily found just by finding the reciprocal of each of these. So all we need to do is switch the numerator and denominator and do not change the sign. And keep in mind that this one right here, obviously there is no denominator, so the denominator is automatically 1. So we can just um, find the reciprocal of each of those ratios to find the reciprocal trig ratios. So for the, the cosecant of the angle will be negative 2 over square root of 3. Uh, the secant of 4 pi over 3 will be negative, uh, will be 2 over negative 1, which becomes negative 2. And of course, the cotangent of 4 pi over 3 is simply 1 over square root of 3. And notice that the signs do not switch uh, in the reciprocal trig ratios. And of course, we can confirm that the signs make sense if we use the cast rule. We know that in the third quadrant, only tangent and cotangent ratios will be positive. So this answer that we have here makes perfect sense as these two answers right here are the only ones that are positive. I hope this helps better understand the concepts in this lesson. I know that there were uh, some things missing in this video lesson, but like I said, I try to make it as short as possible so I can uh, still edit it and it doesn't uh, completely crash my computer. Best of luck with your studies, grade 12s. Take care.